Before I start, I would may ask you, how many of you are working with machine learning or AI in daily basis? Oh, great. So I don't have to explain some basics of machine learning. Today, I want to share with you three points. First, the digital banking in China and the, what is a real bank. And second, the basics and the applications of a new technology called federated learning. And the third, introduction to an open source project we create and donated to the Linux Foundation is called FATE, the Federated AI Technology Enabler. So let's start. The so WeBank and the digital banking. What is WeBank? To most of the people, we are honored as who? Who you are, where you're from? So just discover WeBank from Google Map. Uh, first, we define a tiny little red pin just on the north shore of the southern China Sea. Magnified by 100 times, you can see it's just beside, it's in the Shenzhen city, just beside Hong Kong. Uh, Shenzhen is kind of uh, China's Silicon Valley. Tencent, Huawei, uh, ZTE, uh, Mandarin, all of the tech giants are located in Shenzhen city. Magnified another 100 times you can find just beside the Shenzhen Bay. That's our institute in this building. One and the only facility we have. We have only 2,000 employees in our bank. And over 50 of them, 50% 50 of them are tech guys. Compared to the traditional bank only have four up to 8% of their employees are tech related. Uh, we have a record time, uh, record of TTM time uh, of 11 days. That is when the, on day one you are uh, scratch a, a financial product, and on the day 11 you have it online and operational. Uh, we established our banking service in the end of uh, 2014, and by the end of uh, 2018, we are only four years institute. We have acquired more than 150 million users and uh, generate annual revenue about uh, 10 billion in Chinese currency. And we are 30% held by the Tencent Group. So how does, it, does this even happen? How does this even happen? What is the digital banking? Why is it blooming? That because digital banking is a reflection of globalization. Um, um, this, this, this chart is actually from Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse is a very famous institute in financial area. Um, on the year of 2001, beginning of this century, China has joined the WTO. At that time, uh, beginning from that time, China has become the manufacturer of the world. That is, when the, uh, when the uh, consumers and the buyers in America buy more and uh, more products produced in China, 90% of them send back to, US, to the US and sell in America. So the China, uh, the, the, the China, the economic growth in China is a share of the economic growth in America and the econ economic growth of the global. That's the uh, play um, between the year of 20, uh, 2001 and then the 2008. In 2008, something happened. That is a financial crisis. The Western market collapsed and uh, uh, many products don't sell anymore. So the Chinese government decided to change strategy. In 2009, many massive construction projects conducted in the China area. Two of them, uh, two of them are the 4G network and the high-speed rail. The right chart shows the um, penetration rate of mobile internet in China. It's, it's, a, it's a very wide dot on the bottom and uh, goes to rocket high uh, after the year of the two, uh, 2009. You can see China has building um, more base stations 
than the rest of the world combined. We have roughly uh, 300, or, 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 sorry, three to four million base stations in China, and uh, on the rest of the world combined have roughly 300, uh, three million base stations. And another massive construction project is the high-speed railway. The blue line is the passenger, number of passengers high-speed railway carried uh, per year. You can see around uh, 20, oh, 20, 2014, the uh, passenger carried by the Chinese high-speed railway has uh, passed the number of the American aviation passenger numbers. In the range of uh, 1,000 uh, 1, kilometers, um, traveling with HSR is more convenient than traveling with the air aviation. That create giant cities, group of cities, and uh, an unpre unprecedented consumer market on the mobile internet. Uh, the at the beginning of the China, after China joined globalization, it's around the 2001, uh, the US consumption levels per household are 13 times larger than China's. And uh, now it's only about three times. And uh, actually, uh, in the years we, are, we, are, we, we, are, can, we can forecast it, we will pass the threshold of two. And the, the, it, it is simultaneously happening on the mobile internet. The Chinese don't use credit card. We don't use, use uh, traditional wallet. We use smartphone to pay everything. The Chinese consumer like to uh, buy, go around, buy things anywhere, anytime as they want. So the banking is also going for digital by AI technology. Um, the first thing AI involved in banking is online acquisition. You can uh, build an online acquisition platform based on transfer learning to do real-time bidding on the internet traffic. It's a 10, 15, 10 to 15 times better in cost efficiency than the traditional profile-based targeting. And then the customer will click the ads to the landing page and or to the WeChat channel to communicate with us and inquire about some products. This is a chatbot we build for our uh, customers or to be our customers. Uh, there are four million sessions of inquiries uh, running our chatbot every day. It's maybe the world largest chatbot platform ever. It's, but, but you will be used to it because the, the, the number of Chinese is huge. Now, when they are decided to, to buy or employ our financial products, then going to the next step, we we'll have to identify the actual identity of our customers, not the virtual identity online, but the actual identity of themselves. So there goes the computer vision, computer vision approach for uh, ID, verification, anti-fraud, uh, OCR, uh, something like that. We have more than one million inquiries every day. Um, maybe the largest platform on China also. Um, building on deep learning technology is 10 times cost efficiency than the traditional call center services. And then when they pass the identity of verification, the customer will go through our uh, real-time risk evaluation platform building on large-scale machine learning <laughs> risk evaluation models. Uh, we have only, uh, over 200 models for risk evaluation, and which are, have more than 200,000 variables containing these 200 uh, risk evaluation models. It, it have uh, three times more cost efficiency in the risk management compared to the traditional scorecard. Scorecard is, you can see, in the perspective of machine learning, it's a very small scale regression, um, containing only 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 20 variables. 
So all of together, we, we have uh, uh, building an AI-driven experience to our customers, uh, that which is get alone in 60 seconds, and typically 15 seconds in average, uh, anywhere, anytime he wants, and no extra fee charged. That's full digital driven by AI. Um, I've still have seen all about, you may ask, I want to go to China, I want to get lucky, I want to go to rich, but forget it. The party will be over soon because the data protection, we can call it the data protectionism, is coming. That's the uh, timeline of GDPR, you can see, uh, it was firstly introduced in uh, 2012, and unlike other uh, European agenda, the GDPR has a rocket speed to passing the European Parliament process. And in the year of uh, 20, uh, 2015, uh, it has, uh, it, it, all the three Parliament has a council, uh, all the three major councils has a great agreement on these uh, regulations. Uh, so, from the year roughly about 2010 to 2014, every year, a famous consulting company called uh, Gartner is talking about uh, big data all over again. But in the 2015, the big data technology suddenly vanished from their technology hype map. Uh, the, reason, the, Gartner, the reason that Gartner gave is uh, they think that big data uh, will be everywhere and uh, embedded in every technology, so it's not an individ uh, individual technology anymore. But the real reason for that is this, because the GDPR has passed the European Parliament process and will be carried out in the coming two or three years, which is in uh, the 2018, you can see many uh, corporations are, are fined with the GDPR and uh, cost them, uh, uh, charge them a great deal of dollars. But it's not over again. Uh, the data regulations is more strict and severe in China. Because in the European or in the California or in the US, the data leaking of uh, user data, uh, the user data, data leaking is a corporate offensive. It's not punishable by individuals, but in China, data leaking is a felony. There is a one individual, one natural person in a corporation responsible for protection data. One day, once the, once the data is leaked, it will be punishable up to seven years in prison. I think it's felony in China. So you cannot uh, exchange data or you cannot buy data. It's very risky and dangerous behavior. So without data, there is no digital banking. There is no digital banking AI. So we build this technology called federated learning comes to rescue. This technology allows us to build models without moving actual data from multiple parties. Um, it, it doesn't exchange any raw data or encryption format of raw data. Uh, it only exchange uh, some, um, meet, uh, some, some encryption format of uh, gradients, um, something like that. Um, so, and, and, and you cannot back engineering any data from it. So, so that, that's pretty so, so part of the regulation problem because no actual user data is leaked uh, during the process. Uh, it can be used uh, in many applications in banking or even not banking business can utilize this, this technology as, as healthcare research, uh, medications, um, we have built uh, several uh, network, um, on, you, you can see it on the upper right. We built a network between 
uh, banks to create more anti-money laundering models, and the banks don't have to share their user data. And we created a network between the internet companies and the insurance companies to get more accuracy of pricing. And uh, something like that, there's a lot more. So we come to the second uh, session we, we want to share, share you with. That is the basics and applications of federated learning. Federated learning is first introduced by Google in 2017, I think. They introduced this technology to prevent um, the uh, to prove the, G the Android has, uh, has, protected, has protected the user's privacy. Uh, it was used on the Gboard. That's the input method you're using on the uh, Android. It has a tiny little function that uh, every time you type in a, a, a key strike on the Gboard, he will suggest you a word. This model is really trained and trained based on the input sequence uh, and the correction sequence the user actually input. So it's totally private. But uh, with the technology of federated learning, you can, uh, utilizing the data collection collected from millions of cell phones uh, without actually collecting them into the cloud. The model is trained locally on the device. and. Uh, uh, no actual data is, is transferred to the, uh, is transmitted to the uh, data center. But this technology is only an incremental uh, up upgrading of uh, distributed learning. It has m many constraints, such as each party must have the same feature space. If you, have, you want to do some collaborations between different uh, country, uh, different companies, and they, are, they, they do, we should have different business. Um, this technology will, uh, will not apply because they don't have the same feature space. So we extended the uh, concept of federated learning. You can see the uh, downside, left, downside right is a horizontal federated learning which requires the same feature space and uh, label on every party. Uh, that is was original done by Google. And uh, what we are doing is uh, the upper right thing is vertical federated learning that allows different feature space to work in together to building more decent machine learning models. And uh, the vertical federated learning can be only done on the simple aligned together that you, you have common users, um, which means you have common users, but there is a lot of data you are abandoned to use because they are don't align together. To solve the problem, we have developed another technology called the federated transfer learning to facilitate uh, the, the abandoned data in the model training and, the, and improve the performance of the model. There is a video, actually it's a video on the YouTube we created to, to explain the, uh, the three categories uh, cat of federated learning technology. Um, starting from the vertical federated learning, uh, it's the most complex thing. Um, first, you should understand the exchangeable encryption <laughs> Uh, algorithm. It's, it's a basic uh, technique that we used for private settings section uh, to align the samples from multiple parties. Um, so it's a lot of in encryption equation here. Uh, we want to dive into it. And this, after the, you know, the, the sample is aligned, you can do the actual model training. Um, the in machine learning, you, 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 when you do, it, it, the most common method for machine learning model training is gradient descent. And every, every time you explore gradient from uh, various directions, you will have to calculate the loss function to determine whether the model is converged. So in the, in the, Encryption machine learning setting, 
uh, we only have we only have uh, limited uh, arithmetic operators on, encry on encrypted data. Uh, that is uh, arithmetic of plus, arithmetic of multiply, partially. So we have to rewrite the loss function. It's a logistic regression loss function. We have to rewrite this function in uh, encryption format that is um, with, with polynomial approximation. So you guys are gonna get tired of <laughs> equations. Don't worry, we have 50 page lots of equation come up with. I'm just kidding. So during this process, uh, only some of the encryption uh, mediated data is, is exchanged between parties. No raw data or the raw data, uh, encryption format of the raw data is uh, transferred. But uh, compared to some, some technology, um, for example, uh, the differential privacy, you can differential, you can put some noise in one database and move to another party to join them together to build a new model. But the risk is still there. The risk is still there. The data you move, you move contain all the information that is private. And if your method can be back engineered, uh, it have a high risk of exposing all the, the entire database. And the factory learning only exchange some need to know information in machine learning process and in encryption format. So even if you can back engineer or decrypt the mediated data, you still cannot not uh, back engineer the raw data. It's have two or three layers of protection. Use cases. We are a bank, so our, most of our use cases are loans, a credit estimation. Um, the ideal big data for this estimation of SME loans are showing on the right-hand side. You have all the data you have to describe the actual state of a small business. That is the credit report, the finance, the tax, their, their reputation, and the, 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 if they have any legal, legal suit. But in reality, it's more like the, uh, the right-hand side. It, you only have some blank credit report from central banks. It's not far from enough to describe the credit of a small business. So we get creative. Uh, we build a fair return model between the digital invoice data and the, the credit report data. Um, digital invoice is uh, some kind of a China, uh, the China thing, I think. Um, because in the US, the invoices are printed by different institutes, but in China, there is a backend to authenticate all the invoice. So, so they collect all the invoice data but they can't share or expose to the third party because it's a national security matter. But we use federal learning to utilize this data. And in the result, the model accuracy move up to 12%. And after months of trial, um, the, bad, the cases of bad loans has down by 40%. There is also other applications that we are trying to build with federal learning. You can uh, not only use, uh, using the vertical, uh, vertical federal learning between the two parties, you can also apply uh, horizontal federal learning simultaneously that create a network. And you can, it's not just for big data or large scale machine learning, you can also use it in deep learning that we build a, a deep learning federated network between uh, uh, computer vision customers. That's, uh, that's something we are sharing on our YouTube channel. So that's basics and applications of the federated technology. Now, now we are moving to uh, the project.
uh, the federated AI technology enabler. The vision of federated AI technology enabler is provide industrial level federated learning framework with out of box usability. We are explaining it step by step and enable big data collaborations with data protection regulation compliance. That's our GitHub and that's our website, federai.org. You can find all our resources on this website. The roadmap of this year, or the roadmap we have, uh, is like, like we, uh, until now, we still stick to this roadmap. We, at the end of January, the beginning of the February, we declare the project on the triple, uh, triple AI conference in Hawaii this year, and uh, the, main, ma the major components we released on uh, version 0.1 is Fair Data Machine Learning Toolkit. It's the algorithm uh, components, uh, core algorithm components. And uh, on the March, I think we just reached uh, reach the 100 GitHub stars. Uh, and the first contributor outside WeBank has appeared to uh, prove our stability. And uh, on the two point, uh, on the 0 0.2 version in May, we release fit serving, the first ver version of fit serving. You can deploy your federated model online and do online inference. And uh, in the June of 20, uh, in the June, we donated this project to Linux Foundation, and uh, it became a public governance project. And uh, in this month, uh, for specific today, we announced the 1.0 version of Fate. It contains uh, very important uh, features like uh, fit flow, similar to Kubeflow, and uh, the fit board, the dashboard of federated learning. We are visualizing everything about federated learning. And we are planning to release the next version, 1.1, uh, in the September, in end of September. It will introduce secret sharing, uh, the new protocol uh, for federated learning. Um, at the end of the year, we will uh, fully, uh, fully uh, support deep learning model um, because the, uh, at the, uh, now we only support uh, s several um, kind of deep learning model, not all of, all of them. That's a project landscape. Uh, I want to dive it into specifications, um, but it's too complex to explain. The core component is the Fire Data ML. It has four layers from MPC protocol to numeric operators, machine learning operators, and you combine this together to get a Fire Data machine learning uh, workflow. A typical pipeline of uh, model training process is uh, this. It's covered well by the Fire Data ML lib. And, uh, to run this pipeline, you have to employ fate flow. Um, unlike uh, many other uh, projects like Kubeflow, it only provides uh, flow that's running in uh, Data Central. But uh, in the federated learning process, there's a multi-party thing. You have uh, to arrange and coordinate the uh, training process ac across different sites. So the core of fit flow is uh, federated task scheduler. Actually, uh, federated task scheduler from different sites are linked together. After you train a federated model, you need to put it into service uh, because um, in many settings like vertical federated learning, you don't have the whole models. You, don't have, you, you only have partial of the models. It's called sub-models. So all the sub-models must, must be put online um, simultaneously. That introduces the uh, core function of fit serving, that is model version control. You must align the sub-version of 
submodels and align the submodels with their data. Uh, another, um, another important feature that fit serving have is online FireData ML. It's it actually online FireData machine learning feature engineering. <laughs> because in the real applications, you don't have all the data in your database. Partial of the uh, inference uh, features, uh, uh, partial of the features uh, used by inference is come with the request. So you have two doing online feature engineering to transform this uh, request data to the features that the model can accept. That is online uh, feature engineering. If you don't have this, you will have um, to hard core the, the, this component, uh, but hard code this, this component, but it will have slightly uh, performance difference between the online um, inference and your uh, offline evaluation because the difference in the online uh, feature engineering model. There comes the um, most uh, popular uh, components of the FIDE, of, of the FATE is the FATE da dashboard. Because the FIDE learning technology is new and maybe complex in management, so the FATE dashboard sold it all. We have, you can see, you can monitoring every, proce every model processing, modeling processing, the uh, that graph of model construction, the evaluating of features, and the evaluations of the whole models. It's just like you are using a central base, a centralized modeling platform. It will simulate it for you. So that comes to the last part of, our, of my presentation. Let's call for collaborations. So that's why we are here, isn't it? So we, we will introduce several collaborations on the, the Linux Foundation. We have already begun. The one and the most important is uh, we collaborated with CNCF project called Harbor that allows us to deploy on the Kubernetes uh, smoothly. And we are also uh, looking at the projects like Kubeflow because it's also a flow manager for machine learning. Um, the Harbor project uh, is uh, originated from China. It's developed by the VM Chi VMware China uh, team and it's phenomenal. It has thousands of users uh, they are very warm-hearted. You, you, you guys should meet them. And uh, another project I want to mention is the Angel uh, machine. Uh, it's a full-stack, correct, correct me, it's a full-stack uh, machine learning platform originated from the Tencent group. It, it's stable, it's beautiful, it's powerful, it has millions of users and uh, can process petabytes of data. Uh, we are testing their technologies such, such like parameter servers and arithmetic labs. So again, I bring up our, our website. Everything we are sharing is on our website is um, fedai.org. And there is some more materials for you. Our website URLs, our GitHub URLs. We also have a IEEE standard to bring different implementation, implementation of federated learning together so the different software can talk to each other. And uh, we also have a YouTube, YouTube channel. They have very interesting videos about federated learning and all the uh, applications you are doing with your federated learning. 
uh, it's not only banking, it, uh, uh, it's uh, about uh, the urban management, urban building, uh, various sorts of things. And uh, if you, you want to find some materials about the papers, the tutorials, um, something like that, you can go to the reference materials link. And if you are uh, just want to talk, you can just uh, write me an email. It's tobychen at webank.com. Anyone who have a WeChat account can scan this QR code. Uh, we have a, a assistant, a robot assistant behind this. Uh, <laughs> he'll provide any assistant you may like. That's all. Thank you.